Shut up and sit down. It's where the big boys play, SICW. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Great Week Podcast. Again, we had kind of a break a little bit. One for wrestling, one for some business, and uh, some other for some bullshit. But, uh, today's podcast is going to be a general wrestling news type of podcast, so we'll be a little truncated. But as always, we have the Big Tex and Jim Hofloth and Bell Bell's own Bobby D. What's going on, everybody? Nothing much, nothing much uh, on my end. Uh, I tell you what, uh, it's a lot of news in the wrestling world. Um, there's a lot of money to be made, and uh, there's some companies making it. What about you, Bobby? Shoot, running kids to practices and running concession stands and all that kind of fun stuff. Just busy, busy, busy. Mm. I'm, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> so, last week, I had a board member meeting on Monday and a wrestling committee meeting on Wednesday. Practices on Tuesday and Thursday. And that is why we didn't have a show last week is because... Uh, with uh, Bobby being out, you know, me and Nathan truly don't get along. I mean, it's like scratching nails on a chalkboard, uh, you know, you know, me and him. Um, yeah, a chalkboard? No, we, we couldn't have a show without Bobby. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, Bobby's the peacemaker. Yeah. I'm the, yeah. I'm the eye candy for the fans out there. Uh, so true. So true. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, this, uh, this week's episode... Uh, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of money uh, in the world of professional wrestling. And um, some things was just announced today. Some things were announced a couple weeks ago. So we're just kind of going to talk the situations on all the, the big three, maybe the big four, depending on what everyone thinks they are. But uh, we're going to start off uh, talking about Vince McMahon. Uh, this week, uh, you know, we, we record this on Monday. And we air this on Thursday. So when you guys see this, the Vince McMahon story on Netflix will already be out. Because it's going to come out this Wednesday, uh, September 25th. So my question to both of you guys, how honest do you think this story is going to be? And I'm going to say that because Netflix has signed a $500 million a year deal. Yeah, five hundred million dollars for the next ten years. So we're talking big, lucrative money, making Raw come to Netflix. How real do you think this story is going to be? Be a big old fat negative ten. It's not going to be honest at all. It's going to be sugar coated, and I think it's going to cause problems for people. I think it could be pretty honest. Like controversy creates cash, Bishop. Bischoff proved that in WCW days. So they can throw him and make it like paint him in the worst brushes in the world. And then all they have to do is say, and that's why he was booted out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's because you know, he's, thinking... he was not there when they made this deal. And I think that puts them in the clear to go ahead and be honest with it. Yeah. But if yeah. he shared the coach sexual assault, it doesn't matter if he was there or not. And I think that's what they're probably going to try and do. Well, I think they might dabble in it, but since nothing has gone to court yet, and we haven't heard both sides of uh, of, of the situation, you know, just well, not publicly, it postponed but... and postponed. Well, right now you're still in the stages of he said, she said. Right. That, that, that can't be argued. It's still just he said, she said. Some probably. people may be looking for paydays some people may be being honest could be a mixture of both could be all one or the other yeah that's public too but you guys have been in professional wrestling for a lot of years and you guys know a lot of people and i'm not going to say what we already know but i just don't think it's gonna i think it's gonna piss a lot of people off but yeah i don't I have really think they're just gonna tiptoe around that at the end you know, I think they're going to tell probably a great story on how he bought his dad's company and how he turned it into a, a global phenomenon. Uh, and they'll tell the history, but I bet you at the end, they'll just tiptoe around, uh, you know, the situation where he was let go from his company, uh, basically fired from, from it. 
uh, and alter, you know, these he said, she said stuff is out there, but nothing has come to court. So I, I think I think they're going to tell a pretty, probably a pretty decent story. I just don't think they're going to get into the subject of the termination and why he was terminated and in the situation going in through the courts with this lady. But, yeah, I just wanted to get your guys' viewpoints on this because, man, uh, you know, with Raw going to Netflix – uh, next year, uh, you know, side note, you know, they're dropping down to two hours until the end of this year. And then as soon as they go to Netflix, they're going to go back to three and they're going to change the rating. It's not going to be a PG rating or a, a kid's rating. They're going to, they already said they're going to establish an R rating with it, you know, so we're going to get back to like uh, the, how raw was in the nineties, you know, that's why it was named <laughs> Right. I mean, so it should be uh, a lot interesting to see where they go with that, you know, bringing it back to a Raw. You know, it might be just a lot more cussing and stuff like that, but... Uh, I'm torn on the three-hour part. Like, I've always been that it's a little too much. I kind of daze off or fall asleep by the end of it. But then uh, Mercedes Monet, is that what she goes, Sasha goes by now? She was right. saying, on the, you know... The three hours, that extra hour, does give a lot of your under and mid cards an opportunity. Yeah, but that's the question I was going to ask both of you. Is three hours too long? Well, you know, for the longest time when it raw start, st first started, it was only two hours, and WCW became three hours, so raw switched to three hours, and it's been like that, you know, for the do uh, downfall of WCW, and they just stuck to three hours. Um, my question kind of, uh, for now though, they're going to switch down to two hours, uh, from here on to the end of the, the contract. What's that going to do for that, for that talent that normally had that hour slot that, uh, they can get themselves over, you know, that's, that's going to remove a lot of TV time for those guys. So are we going to look for more firings here in the future? Uh, people being let go. It's definitely a possibility, but they still have NXT and so many things all over the place where they can keep guys working on a lower level without having to fully let them go. Could that be why they had the bloodline go to NXT the last couple uh, shows there? You know, the, yeah. you know, I say, if anything, I could see it having NXT guys let go from it. And here's the funny thing. Uh, not really funny, but NXT is actually, it, it, it's a little weird, because uh, NXT announced that they're going to start touring, and they've done a little tour here and there. Um, nothing major like the, you know, 250 days a year that, you know, the main roster does. Um, but they announced that they are going to increase the amount of dates, but at the same time, they announced that, the main roster is going to cut down on their dates. Uh, and that was mainly due to, uh, was it TKO or whoever is the parent company uh, telling them that you're not making enough money off of these house shows that you start, you need to start cutting those down and make it just the big, the big shows, you know, raw SmackDown, the pay-per-view. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Again, this could mean some cuts as well, because if they're not going to do that many house shows, um, you know, that's going to be even less time for talent to be on there. And with disposable income taking a hit this year and probably half the next year, you can expect some uh, some firings coming up. Uh, at least until Netflix debuts it, because once they start getting that first check of five hundred million a year. You know, I'm sure they're going to be able to afford the, the best talent out there on the market and maybe rehire some guys, um, you know, because today uh, it was announced that Mick Foley re-signed. Um, he had a Legends deal a long time ago, but then, you know, he would break it and do things with other promotions. Well, he just re-signed another Legends deal uh, today. So Mick Foley's coming back. Uh, there's rumors that Kurt Angle is signing the Legends deal, so he might be coming back in some sort of, 
you know, Steve, it's not really as a performer, but as uh, I like to call them hype people where they'll come to uh, say like if Raw's going to Minneapolis next month, they'll go there like a week or two prior to kind of stir up some energy and, uh, you know, do some free signings. Uh, they get the, you know, uh, people notice that, hey, yeah, WWE is coming back into town. We need to buy tickets for this. So it's a lot of big stuff happening with uh, WWE right now. So a legend of road crew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, speaking of about money and TV deals and stuff like that, uh, you know, a AEW, Tony Khan, has been uh, trying to get a deal with uh, their TV, and it looks like they finally inked a deal, not quite as high as the $5 million, uh, $500 million for Netflix, but uh, they're going to get $170 million a year, and that's going to move their shows to you know the TNT, the TBS, and True TV. True TV is going to get the, like the replays. <laughs> of uh, the other two shows, Dynamite and Rampage and stuff like that. But $170 million. So that's going to, you know, it, it's not quite the 500 but it's still going to allow them to sign big-name people that are out there on the independents uh, to come in. Uh, hopefully it's it's better people being signed. Uh, Is that going to be deal 170 per year or total? 170 same? per year. Now, they have not released how many years this contract is for, uh, where WWE has released their contract is for 10 years, but Netflix has uh, a clause in it. After five years, if they don't see the profits that they expect, that they could pull out of the deal. But in the same instance, if after five years, if the profits are there, they can actually uh, expand their deal for another 10 years, and WWE will have to commit to that. So now I've read Netflix doing that deal, similar deal with other uh, original shows they have. It sounds like that's pretty much their standard one. It is, yeah. but let me ask you guys, on a pay-per-view type of platform like Netflix, do you think they're going to get a profit of $2.5 in five years to pay for that? Well, here's the what thing. What type too. of marketing terms are there besides just new people signing up for Netflix? Are they sharing and merchandise sales, house show money? Probably not. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some Netflix related merchandise uh, that they're going to be able to sell. Um, but, you know, Netflix just lowered their price down to $16.99 a month. Um, for advertisements now. So I'm sure Netflix yeah. is going to start earning money that way as well. Yeah, um, yeah before, that, makes, that makes more sense. Yeah, before it was just uh, no commercials, just straight to your program, and then you can watch it, you know, all day long. Well, now they're going to throw in commercials, so they're going to be able to make some money that way as well. Um, but... Raw has got such an audience that follows it because they used to go to USA and then TNT and then back to USA and then, you know, and you already have to have a cable system to watch it. Uh, so you're already paying something. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of uh, the people that pay attention to Hulu and Netflix, and uh, they always say that Netflix is pretty much the steady streaming service. Like, they lose a few customers, but gain a few, um, where the other ones, depending on the TV shows that they have on, depends on if they're actually doing good or not. Um, well, I have Hulu and Disney and ESPN and all that shit, and I'm barely on any of those. Well, well that's what I was going to ask. Are they getting the uh, whole network, or are they just getting raw? They're just getting raw. See, that Peacock deal ends in 26. So Peacock has all the stuff, all the back catalog um, for them. Uh, so, I mean, will they go to Netflix after 2026? I doubt it. 
I bet you some other streaming service is going to pick up the catalog. Um, because why put it on Netflix when you're already getting 500 million a, a year? You're going to try to get 500 million a year from someone else now, you know? Yeah. You know, why just give it to them? Um, so well, yeah, diversification is key, but I wonder if they're going to be pulling Coop down. Well, see, Peacock has the rights to the pay per views. So. When that ends, I mean, everyone is probably going to be uh, hounding them for that back catalog and the rights to the pay-per-views. Um, so I'm sure I heard little rumors that Amazon Prime will probably be the top one uh, on the bidding war because they have the money. But who's to say, you know? Well, Amazon has the money to buy whole studios and then flat out reject to put any of the movies and post-production in the theater. Right. Uh, now, AEW, their pay-per-views are going to start streaming on Mac streaming service. Um, so everyone's moving away from that whole pay-per-view thing. Um, which I, I really thought being uh, under TKO uh, or whatever the parent company now is, that they would actually fall back into the monthly pay-per-view that you would have to buy for 50 bucks. Um, but it doesn't look like that's the way they want to go. They want to go where it's a package deal. You get the back catalog and the current pay-per-views um, all at one. Um, so, I mean, if they go to Prime, I'm fine with that. I've been an Amazon Prime member forever. So, uh, I think just about everybody is. <laughs> right. Too much too much stuff to order with it and it comes free with it. Right. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I have it for just free shipping. <laughs> Which truly is really not the next day anymore. They're getting a lot of heat over that because a lot of their stuff is still two days, three days, even if you have the prime membership. Yeah, the, the processing the center is here in St. Louis, and you order something that's at the processing center, it'll be there that same day or the next day, and then you get that stupid email. Oh, yeah, it's going to be an extra day or two. <laughs> right. What's the right. point? Um, but going off of, uh, so a AEW we talked about, NWA, really not a whole lot of news about the NWA. Uh, they're still on the CW app. You know, they're not even on the CW channel yet. Um, so they're on the app. Uh, you know, uh, Billy Corgan's got his little behind-the-scenes TV show. Uh, so far, it's just that one season. Um, and then they have uh, NWA Power, which comes out every Tuesday on the app. Um, but he announced uh, back in May that he signed another TV deal, but he hasn't spoke about it since so from may till september that's a big gap there that if it was a cool tv signage you would think he would have been proud enough to talk about it by now but he hasn't so i don't know um if it's fallen through or if it's still a go uh, i yeah, hate we've to, all heard that from billy before i've signed this deal i've signed that deal and then it never comes to fruition so right yeah, it's kind of like when he announced that uh, NWA 76 was going to come back to St. Louis and then they went to Philadelphia instead. Uh, but uh, I won't give him shit about that. But he announced it, that they were coming back to St. Louis and then it... It's like... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, he's just I... trying to jump on the coattails of WWE, so... And and, and a lot of them do, uh, does that because GCW went to Philly... Uh, a lot of uh, the independents uh, started doing shows right around WrestleMania time in Philadelphia, trying to bank off the people coming there. Uh, and you well, know, it's, an, it's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem, and Billy needs a lot of help running his organization. So, well, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it though, but right now, you know, Billy's on tour with the Smash and uh, Pumpkins, and uh, it seems like. That is the NWA tour as well, because every time they stop somewhere, they have the NWA uh, wrestling open up for them. Um, so, I mean, 
it used to be cool back in the 80s. They used to do that little rock and wrestling, you know, with Sidney Lauper and, uh, you know, the rest at WWF at the time. Uh, I just think it's, I mean, it's probably good for him because he gets to tour with his wrestling show and his, um, you know, um, music show at the same time. So he's probably saving money somewhere, but um, oh, he's making money twice in a night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no uh, big talks on, t on TNA. I, I try to, you know, Google them and see if there's anything going on, but uh, really there's not. Uh, you know, the big thing with TNA is uh, our friend JBL showed up there a couple weeks ago um, and uh, helped uh, Nick Namath, uh, their champion, um, you know, handle some business. And the uh, funny thing is JBL has been kind of showing up everywhere. He showed up at GCW. He showed up, uh, uh, which is weird, he showed up at an MLW uh, show not too long ago. I think that was last week. And MLW had that big lawsuit against WWE uh, for the longest time. Uh, so I don't know if that's uh, a way that WWE is trying to help them out, say, uh, please forgive us, because I think WWE lost the lawsuit. So they're, like, giving them a little nudge, saying, uh, here you go, you can have uh, the special uh, uh, JBL, you know, coming into your uh, your promotion. Uh no one knows really why JBL is doing it because uh, he is signed to WWE. Uh, so it is weird that he's being allowed to go to these other organiza other organizations. I, I understand TNA because it seems like WWE and TNA have a working relationship now. But to show up at a GCW show or show up at an ML, uh, yeah, MLW show, uh, that's a little beyond the norm there. Uh, so Considering they won't even let JBL come and do our podcast. Right. He almost couldn't do the Fan Fest. Uh, the first year the Fan Fest came out, uh, they almost pulled him from there uh, until he uh, uh, talked to them about how, um, you know, this means a lot to him for uh, Black Bart because Black Bart needs money. And he was donating all of the money he made to Black Bart. And then they allowed him to come on. Uh, and do the fan fest. So uh, it's kind of weird, uh, but you know, who knows? Maybe this is just opening up the doors for the WWE to start pulling more people from MLW or uh, or from TNA. Uh, you know, one of uh, Rikishi's boys, no, not Umaga's boys, was working in MLW, and uh, they just pulled him. And there's rumors that he's going to be in NXT here soon. So maybe that was the trade-off. You know, you can have JBL for a night or two, and we're going to pull uh, Umaga's son, you know, to help with the bloodline story. All right, let's get Matt back to W. What do we have coming for our next show? Well, this weekend we got the racetrack show. Uh, the race, our part portion of it will be at 2 o'clock. I had yes. a... Uh, challenge sent to me from Steve Fender for the Central States title, so of course I'm answering that with a yes. <laughs> so you hear it here first, guys. Bobby D accepts the, cha the, the challenge. Now, is it for the Central States that he's challenging you? Uh, or uh, Yeah, he's going to defend his other title with someone else, but he uh, put a challenge out to me for the Central States title, so I'll be there. That's awesome. Oh, we have to really to once again. Um, no one has talked about the card for this Saturday, so Bobby D's match is the only one that we know about. Um, you know, but uh, I think there's like four or five matches because uh, it's only going to be like an hour, hour and a half long or something like that for the show, um, which is fine uh, because this time will probably be the first time that we can wrestle and then actually sit back and, and watch some of the race. You know, uh, both the, the previous two times, you know, the first time uh, it was raining and we were worried about wrestling uh, between uh, the showers. And so we did that. And, uh, you know, then they canceled uh, most of the race because of the rain. Uh, we were able to see the concerts, uh, you know, uh, uh, where Bobby D was signing more autographs. Um, 
than the singer. I can't think of his name. Um, Ludacris. Ludacris. Uh, so, and then the second one, we had another show that same evening. So it was Herp and Russell tear down the ring. Let's move it all over and Russell again. So this will be the first time that we'll actually be able to sit back and if you want to watch the race, relax, eat some of the good food and Come on, it's NHRA. You better be sitting and watching. Right. You know? Uh, but the following week, I think, is the biggest week for SICW because it, it really holds the future of SICW uh, is going to come down to October 5th. Um, not only uh, because that is my return match. I'll talk about that for a second. Uh, it's a return match, me versus Kowalski. Uh, it's going to be a pretty crazy match because it's anything goes, um, falls count anywhere. Um, Lucky P. Larson is actually going to be handcuffed to the uh, to the ring, kind of like what they did to me uh, when uh, Haku, uh, you know, turncoat Haku uh, turned his backs on us and went to the to the Stephen E. side. So uh, Lucky P. Like I said, he'll be handcuffed. Uh, to the ropes, to the ring post, wherever they do it. So I won't have to worry about him. You know, last time, you know, he got me with a crowbar. Um, you know, with his, uh, I don't even know if his arm is still broken. You know, he's probably just using it because it's a perfect L shape. So he yeah. can hide that crowbar in there. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a very interesting match. Of course, the title, the classic strap is on the line. Um but like I said, it's going to be based on the future of SICW later that night um, because uh, Herb announced and Stephen E. announced that uh, they're going to have a contract signing. What's this contract about? Is it the contract that Stephen E. is going to buy SICW? Um, is it, uh, you know, Herb Simmons saying, you know, screw you, Stephen E. The contract is I'm going to be here for another 50 years, uh, you know, running this promotion. Um you know, we really don't know. Uh, last night on SICW TV on YouTube, you know, they had interviews with uh, wife's uh, uh, wife's Herb's wife, Herb's Mickey, wife. and uh, Herb's daughter uh, Jess, uh, and they couldn't answer it with a straight answer. You know, even Mickey said that you know she don't think Herb would ever sell the company because it means so much to him. But the I don't think. And he is getting old because they, she even said, you know, Herb is getting older. Um, you know, bodies tend to break down and we know Herb has had some illness here lately. Um, he's at the age that he, re he can retire peacefully and be well off. Um, so we really don't know a hundred percent what's in my, uh, Herb's mind and if he's going to sign, uh, SICWA or if he's going to keep running it, or, you know, I would think, you know, if he were to sell it, that he would sell it to one of the boys that truly loves SICW, doesn't want to change SICW. You know, um, Stephen E., first thing he said is he's going to bring Travis back full time and make him some sort of a high level there, or I don't know what they called him, and then... They were going to promote Stephen E and uh, uh, Lucky P to something else. So, uh, you know, uh, sell it to one of the boys, or maybe a group of us boys can get together and try to match this money offer from uh, Stephen E. Uh, well, but yeah, so it's, it's October 5th, and it's the return of us to the fairgrounds. Uh, so okay. this Saturday is at the racetrack in Granite City. October 5th is our return to. Uh, what we like to call home, uh, which is the Belleville Fairgrounds. Um, of course, the doors open at 6, show starts at 7, and uh, you'll be able to witness the future of SICW and which direction it's going to go. Well, I was just going to say that if when we're there, I'll jump down from the, the TV area and go run and tear up a contract if he's going to sell it to Stephen E. Uh, he didn't chop it around. Yeah. What if we have something to say about it, huh? <laughs> and if everything goes in your match, I may jump down from the TV area and come down and 
Whack Kowalski a couple times. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> and then roll under the I'll have a new title to use on him, too. Yeah, there you go. You, you'll have the Central States. You know, I'll retain uh, the Classic. And we'll continue SICW Heard Simmons Strong. I mean, that, that'll be the best of the night. Uh, yeah. That'll be great. Um, and I can get out without getting my nose broke. <laughs> yeah, that one. Probably not. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, you know, the posters are probably going to be hitting, uh, you know, the most common places, AutoZone and, uh, you know, my fitness place and everything like that. So the poster should be out there. I seen the poster on Facebook. Uh, so, you know, look around, you'll be able to uh, see some of them and, uh, you know, depending on if you're lucky, you might be able to snag one of those posters and come to the show and get an autograph. You never know. Um. You know, people have done that before because I, like, how did you get this poster? Because, uh, you know, it's those big ones. And I know there was only a handful of those that uh, gets distributed. Yep. But, well, uh, I have a big thing in the corner of all last year's posters. Do you? I might have to come raid that one because uh, I don't think I have the big poster of me. Uh, winning it at the Fan Fest, uh, the classic title. Yeah, I have that. I have that in the corner. So yeah, uh, because I have like my space here is so cluttered. Like if I were to turn this camera around, my desk, you know, levels here, but everything that's on top of it makes it to here. So, um, you know, they put baby in the corner is what I'm trying to say. Is all my <laughs> stuff is in the corner now and. Uh, uh, if you break out a pottery that. wheel, I'm out of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong move. Old Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I have so many old posters. Like, um, you know, when me and Bobby used to work uh, both promotions, Broadway and SICW, I have the old, cool posters that uh, little Tony used to make out. Uh, and those were cool. Those look like, well, I guess it's the only way he knew how to do them. You know, it was the old classic style of uh, posters where you got the picture of the main event, you know, who's going against who, and then down below the sub uh, matches and stuff, and then also appearing on this card, you know, such and such wrestlers. They just look cool. They, they I say they look old-fashioned, but what I'm saying is Tony, uh, you know, he ran South Broadway for many a year, so that was probably just his regular poster, you know. That, that was just his fashion, not old fashion. <laughs> I would like to see an old, a, a throwback once or twice to the really old ones where they were all white and then just a band with the stars and yeah, a big that's, black text. That's I like how it's like, yeah, I like the SICW, SICW do that. Limited edition posters. I mean, they'll yeah, probably yeah. never be up anywhere. People will steal them like crazy. <laughs> like what happened in Sandoval, they were stealing posters. We didn't talk well, about that yet. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't uh, the fans stealing those. Uh, it's a pretty good word. There was another promotion uh, stealing those uh, banners. And those banners cost him like $500 a piece, and he had like three or four of them stolen. So that was kind of shitty on that promotion. Uh, Especially because it was a charity event. You're stealing from a charity. Yeah. You know, that was, the, you know, just like we did for the Little Devils. That was the help uh, this, those sports teams you know, get new uniforms and uh, pay the lights and, and stuff like that. So that's just horrible. Yeah. And like, it was the the money 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 there's a put his bank account on the line to help out the people there and that they other promoting promotion stole from it, so. And it's not like that promotion runs in that area every month. They're they're scattered on where they run. So they only hit that one once every four or five months and just to take away the uh the benefit for a school to make money that that's just i was i was told they don't even really run out there just one of the wrestlers live out there that could be too well i mean karma happens his house might burn down for the karma i don't know <laughs> well uh, you're, gonna steal, I, you're gonna steal from kids because you're an asshole it wouldn't break my heart. 
from what I gather, the police have already uh, been called, and I don't know the end results, uh, but some investigation is being handled. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if karma gets them uh, faster than what we can. But uh, allegedly, yeah, allegedly, allegedly that we can. Uh, some other things that uh, hit the news uh, today. Uh, Ric Flair announced that uh, he's breaking up with his uh, current wife. I think she was wife number five. Uh, Is that it? I think so. Um, yeah, so uh, his wife's name was Wendy. Uh, they actually met back in WCW. Um, she was one of the girls, the Nitro girls, I think. Uh, or someone behind the scenes, maybe. But uh, this wife was the one that recently took care of him when he, you know, pretty much died in the hospital. You know, he was right on cue with the dogs. That's a, that's a Ric Flair hater puppy right there. <laughs> now the other retirees. My first, well, I said Ric Flair, so, you know. Oh, you have some woods behind your house. Maybe you have somebody creeping up. So any kind of lightning or any kind of uh, southern noise, you know, uh, flips them off. And right now, I don't know if it's raining where you guys are, but it's raining over here. Uh, yeah, it's raining over here. Too. Hi. Yep, I was sitting out in the rain at Landon's football game before this. Oh, nice. That's a rough football there. Yeah. You know what's great, though? This is the best. We've had a connection when it's raining all the way over and all of our... Even though we're kind of close to everybody, we live in different parts of the county, so... But, so, before I was really interrupted by these dogs, um, oh. yeah, so Ric Flair announced that he was breaking it off with Wendy... You know, like I said, he was in the hospital. He was pretty much on his deathbed. And uh, she stayed with him, didn't leave the hospital. You know, there's stories about her staying there 24 hours uh, a day for weeks. Um, and to me, that's... I, I know he probably left, and I'm just saying this because I know Rick, Rick Flair, you know. He's got to be the man, you know, 24-7. And I'm sure him being the man pisses off the wife a lot. Um, you know, if you're trying to you know, get the in between things that I'm saying there. Uh, and it was just a oh, matter of time. In, they live in Florida, don't they? Um, you know, they might, but I know uh, Charlotte, uh, he has a house there too. So it's probably one of those drive back and forth things or. But if they settle in Florida, that's a fair and equitable state. It's not necessarily a division down the middle of assets. Well, you know, he, he talks about how much money he lost and how he was in debt to Vince McMahon uh, and to the IRS. That Vince McMahon gave him uh, money to cover his IRS bills because he was so... Uh, back up and child support and alimony and everything like this. But uh, uh, I just think it's it's kind of crappy on him because she stuck with him when he was really bad off and uh, almost dead. And I know it's his lifestyle that is, is probably kind of, uh, you know, uh, making this split happen. And you think he would change, uh, you know, Death has a, a habit of doing things to people, and you think he would change for the good. Um, but, you know, I'm, this is just speculation. Um, I'm just going off of the Ric Flair that I'm used to seeing on the TV, and, you know, I've met him many a times in real life. Um, so it's just... Uh, yeah, you have I to be the man there, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are, we already talked about Mick Foley. He was going to be my next thing. We just kind of moved that around. Um, my next topic is Cody Rhodes. Um, it was announced today that, uh, out of sports, not just sports entertainment, so not just wrestling, 
but out of sports and out of any uh, famous personality that he is uh, one of the top five people with the highest merchandise sales. So he's already moved past wrestling. So he moved past The Rock and Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan and moved past, you know, football players and basketball players and baseball players to be one of the top five guys uh, that merchandise flies off the shelves. And, uh, and to me, that was crazy because for the longest time, it was Hulk Hogan in wrestling. And then Stone Cold came out. And, uh, you know, Stone Cold had less time in wrestling, you know, with his uh, broken neck that happened and then him wanting to retire. And Hogan technically still hasn't retired because he still goes around and uses his wrestling fame uh, and even talks about one more run that he wants to do. Uh, but uh, for Stone Cold to beat out Hulk Hogan, and that was crazy. Um, but for Cody Rhodes to beat Hogan out all the wrestlers. Fame. <laughs> Said Hogan what? and his wrestling fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but for Cody Rhodes to beat out all the sports guys, boxing, uh, UFC, uh, to be one of the top five players when it comes to merchandise sales. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was kind of unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, especially right now. Yeah, it looks like, I was curious on the money, but it looks like it's a million dollars every weekend that he makes yeah. just from his merch sale. That's uh, crazy. You know, I can see it when he was getting involved in the storyline with the bloodline and, and then even The Rock, because, you know, that's what I said that brought me back into not being a regular... Uh, watcher of wrestling, uh, but catching up on, um, you know, the replays and being able to watch it on YouTube, you know, that's what brought me back in. But since he, be, since he became champion, I kind of lost my, my fanfare for him, you know, and they say that too. It's, it's people get behind baby face wrestlers when they're trying to capture the title. But once they capture the title, they need another major heel to come in and almost take it off of them or eventually do, uh, does take it off of them so they can have that drive again to try to get that title back. Um, so right now, you know, he's, he's not doing it for me anymore. You know, he's not having... Uh, I don't think there's really anyone in that caliber that can take him on realistically. Uh, you know, Roman Reigns, you know, he just came back and he's not even going after Cody, <laughs> you know, he's going after the bloodline. So that still takes the, the major heel that came back, Roman Reigns, not going after the title belt. You know, do they have people that they can toss in there every now and then, you know, like a Braun Strowman? Uh, yes, uh, there's that guy uh, that uh, they talked about having that he had a big match with Braun last week. Another big, big guy, shorter but big. Um, you know, so he's out there where he can maybe have a match with, but he's he's so new that I don't think they would put the championship behind him yet or on him. So really, well, I'm just no throwing one. out there. There's some dude named Brandon Beretta out there that deserves a shot. <laughs> yeah, that's true, and that's why I can't really dog uh, NWA because uh, I'm pulling for Brandon, and I, I I want the NWA to sign him, you know, so he can at least be in the one of the big four, maybe the big five, you know, because GCW I think has. I think it's right up there with NWA with uh, big time players and big matches. Um, sometimes yeah, I've, been looking at numbers. I've been looking at GCW's numbers the past couple months because they've been invading my feeds everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And they're just, they're well, not well, GCW. GCW kind of uh, favors for all the fans. They have classic wrestling matches, and then some nights they go way off 
on the left side and start having thumbtack uh, thumbtack matches and light bulb matches and crazy shit. So they can go from regular wrestling to like horrible wrestling, <laughs> you know, where shit can go wrong really quick. Um, but uh, and so they they have a bigger fan base is what I'm trying to say. And they're using the guys like Matt Cardona that uh, the NWA uh, pulls in every now and then. Um, and they're, they're using, uh, you know, other people with higher names uh, here lately. Uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting. But, um, uh, you know, besides NWA, uh, Brandon Beretta is also kind of dabbling his feet in the OVW. And I, I wanted to uh, talk about two other things about Netflix. So OVW had a, a last year they did a season on Netflix, and I I thought it was great. It kind of showed the backstage politics of wrestling, uh, and then still carried on with uh, the storylines of wrestling. Um, and I hope they come back with a season two. But I hope the WWE don't put, like, uh, where you're wrestling so no other wrestling can be on this, you know, type thing. And they've done that before. You know, that's how ECW got kicked out of TNT uh, because they had a contract. And then WWE said, no, we're switching to TNT. Uh, You're going to have to get rid of them. And so TNT broke that contract and then ECW went away. Uh, just for Vince McMahon to move back to USA, you know, a year or so later. Um, but uh, I really wish they have a season two. Um, and I don't know if you guys watch uh, Sylvester Stallone's uh, Tulsa King, uh, but one of the guys from uh, OVW uh, made an appearance um, last week on Tulsa King and hopefully uh, will be uh, a mainstay uh, TV character. Um, I had his his name in my head, but now I can't think of it. Um, God. The stuff that goes in one ear and out the other is is amazing. If I can just keep all the knowledge, uh, he had something to do with money. Uh, Man. Oh, no. Didn't watch Colts again. Uh, I'll I'll find a picture and you can post it on the end of this video because uh, he was one of the main characters that I uh, got behind watching the show, and I was so you know I thought it was so cool that I seen him where he's becoming a TV actor now. Um, so it'd be, it'd be kind of cool if he does. Uh, the other thing on Netflix, my other favorite show last year got canceled last year. As heels, uh, they ran two seasons, um, and it was a great TV show. Mm-hmm. And uh, they Netflix bought them out. You know, they got canceled, uh, but Netflix just bought uh, you know the two seasons, and they're putting it on Netflix now. You can currently watch it, and uh, through the grapevine, they have kind of announced that. Uh, if people start watching it and they get a lot of fanfare behind uh, watching the past two seasons, they'll bring that back for a third season. So um, the second season left on such a cliffhanger that, man, if they just do one more episode, I'll be thrilled. Um, so hopefully uh, they can, uh, you know, people get behind it and watch it. And uh, Bobby, uh, you're, pr- oh, there he is. That's him right there. Uh What's his name? Cash flow. Say cash flow. Yeah. Mike. That that's awesome. I was kind of hoping he's, Bobby would have jumped on that, but he's uh, been around a long time too. He's done a lot of, uh, more death matches in recent years. Oh well, no, I think that was more of his earlier career was death matches. But uh, he was. I mean, they. Uh, you know they. Uh, Oh, uh, OVW, when they did it, they uh, kept the cameras on a few main guys. Um, and there was another guy from the Memphis Territory that Herb Simmons had brought up a couple times. Um, I'm going to forget his name, too. But... Um, outlaw. If you re- huh? Was it Outlaw? 
Uh, yeah, Jake. Uh, Jake, Jake Law, or Jake Lawless. Uh, so during that season, they talked about how he had uh, a drug addiction and how he was like one of the main stars at OVW. And then uh, he would start showing up under the influence and they fired him. And I think that's kind of where he was kind of free range to go anywhere. And he came up and worked for us for a few times. Um, I, I tell you, a great guy in the back, uh, in the locker room. No, we had no problems with him. Um, and then, you know, later in the season, I think it was the final episode of the season. Uh, he came back, you know, so who knows how long that season was filmed for. Um, but by the end of the season, they gave him a second shot uh, and he was able to come back and start working the promotion again. Um, which, you know, a lot of times people just need that second shot kind of, of a wake up call. Uh, so glad to see that he's back to work in OVW. Um, glad that uh, cash flow uh, it has made it out uh, and uh, hopefully uh, can become an actor because we always talk about how wrestlers don't have no fucking uh, retirement fund. And during that season, he talked about that's the only thing he does. He makes all of his merchandise in his house. When he goes to the show, he is not only getting paid uh, for the show, but he's trying to make up his rent, his power bill, everything from his merchandise. So I'm glad that he was actually able to break out and he had speaking parts. Because I know the thing is, is, you can be an actor, but you won't get those benefits of a lifetime uh, health insurance if you don't have any speaking parts. Uh, so I was so glad that he was in the whole episode. I don't know if you have to to do, like, a pay-per-view program. Well, like, uh, if you're trying to piggyback off what I was saying... Pay-per-view and wrestling shows aren't counted as, like, the Actors Guild uh, to where you get the health insurance. So for him to actually have a role where he was able to speak and get some lines in, you know, he's going to get that. So I'm just, I'm just proud of the guy for breaking out uh, and, uh, you know, having a stable life. Because it, it talked about his kids uh, and, and everything. If, if you get a chance, just watch the show. Heels... And then the OVW on Netflix, um, two great wrestling shows. Uh, it's kind of like that's, uh, why, that's why the CAC is so important, right? Because there like, isn't something else. You know, those two shows, even though one is totally fictional, uh, heels, uh, they did a great job um, of telling uh, the promoter side of things. And uh, the storyline side of things. And so did OVW with Al Snow. Because Al Snow was so old school. And you can tell that it was eating him alive. Uh, giving out a little more information to Netflix than what he wanted to. Um, you know, uh, so that was kind of cool. Uh, you know, one of the top movies for wrestling. Uh, that had a wrestler involved. Uh, to talk about wrestling, because they did a lot of those one-off movies in the 80s, and Hogan did a bunch of one-off movies, but The Wrestler uh, with Mickey Rourke, uh, mm -hmm. the best wrestling movie there is. So uh, uh, The Wrestler for movie-wise, and then those two for TV series-wise, I think um, is the best. Um, but if enough people watches uh, The Heels they'll actually do a season three. So, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm actually looking more forward to that than Raw coming to Netflix. <laughs> Got to play that on repeat, even when you're not sitting there. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, um, I know I wanted to keep this uh, to an hour, so uh, uh, there's just a not really topic. Is, is there any other topics that you two want to talk about? No, just the show is coming up, the one in Sandoval. We didn't really touch on it, on how you guys did and who wrestled. But well, we, have uh, 14, we have 14 minutes left. The the show actually went off without a hitch. Uh, you know, it took, uh, um, let's see, 
Bobby, who'd you go against? Trending Trent Daniels. All right. So how'd that go for you? It went good. Uh, pretty much just had my way with him. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. He got some stuff in there, too. Uh, he's He's got some some skill to him, but he still has a lot of learning to do, too. Yes, I think well, he's he starting to eat more meat. He's like a vegan, a dude that's skinny. I actually sat down and had a conversation with, with him. And I'm complex on him because I know, uh, you know, he's kind of uh, in the pocket of a Sean Vincent falling behind Glenn Williams. But he actually talked to me and he was a fan of SICW. He was a kid that his dad would bring him uh, into the audience and, and watch SICW shows. And he talked about how he remembers most of my matches when and he might have been falling behind my footsteps. Who knows? Because he brought up the fact that he remembers when I wore a mask and how I was uh, the big heel guy. And and uh, we, we talked a, a good time uh, about you know, wrestling, I was kind of hoping to get into his head and maybe pull him to the good side, but we'll see. Um, I had a match with Peyton Ayers. Um, you know, it was a classic big guy, big guy match. Um, Lilith Khan got involved and uh, uh, threw up a lot of the match, but uh, she uh, stuck her nose into the wrong part. Uh, Peyton Ayers had me tied up from behind and uh, I'll try and allow Lilith uh, to actually smack me um, but I was able to dodge it and she smacked the piss out of Peyton uh, which allowed me to roll him back into the ring and set up for the lariat when he popped up you know so it was a great match uh, Joey Joey let's go. I know Joey and Glenn Williams uh, had a pretty decent match, too. Uh, I started to put that one on uh, YouTube, um, you know, for Joey, because Joey doesn't have a lot of matches out there. Um, I had to uh, come out in the main event. Mine was a semi-main. Uh, the main event that night was, was uh, Attila Khan uh, versus the Golden Boy. Um, Anthony. Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony. And, uh, you know, Greg Anthony is a hometown hero. You know, that's where he grew up. And um, he was going against Attila, you know, one of those bad motherfuckers. And uh, Peyton came out uh, towards the end there, and they double-teamed Greg, knocked Bill Henson, uh, the ref, down, and um, basically uh, beat the crap out of uh, Greg Anthony and uh, got the ref to wake up just in time to... Uh, let uh, Tilla Khan get the pin. So Tilla did win in a bullshit way, uh, and then they kept beating on him after the after the win. So uh, I came out, kind of evened it, and uh, put Peyton through a wall, and uh, uh, you know Gray grabbed his chair, kind of evened out the score with him and Attila, smacked Attila over the head with it. So it was, um, you know, it was a great show, and. Uh, um, they said that they were able to raise a lot of money, uh, so that was even better. Um, awesome. Yes. Uh, anytime, like I said, even with the trouble that we had, you know, with another promotion stealing signs uh, or individual stealing signs, um, the organization was still able to make a great amount of money, and they were very happy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but what I was leading into, there, it's been a while since I've done um, – like what I've picked up in the wild and, and I'm talking about figures and uh, normally uh, Saturdays are pretty busy for us and I'm never able to get to the flea market, the bubble flea market on Saturday. Normally I go on a Sunday and it's like picking scraps of what's left, you know? Uh, but this Saturday I was able to go to uh, not when they first opened, I probably midday, and I tell you, I was able to find some stuff uh, that was unbelievable to me. Uh, my first pickup was, you know, I'm still trying to finish the collection of the LJNs. And I was able to find this long-haired Andre the Giant. Um, I had him before. Uh, he was one of them that uh, 
I sold my collection off to to a fellow wrestler who ended up uh, not paying for the whole collection, uh, but he paid uh, physically for the collection uh, when I caught back up to him. Uh, so uh, I'm so glad. I was trying to say that in the most political way I could. <laughs> so I was so glad I picked him up. And then uh, I ran into <clears throat> this guy right here. There we go. Um, now, see, now I'm even looking at the character, Bam Bam Bigelow. And uh, I almost forgot his damn name. You hardly find any Bam Bam Bigelow figures. Um, they're just scarce. He was such um, a heel uh, back in the day. And he was a big boy, just my size too. But he was so agile. You know, he would do the cartwheels in the ring. He would do the backflip in the ring. Um, and so when I seen him, uh, the deal on him was uh, the, the guy selling these um, – was uh, two dollars each or three for five, so I had to get the deal. So I ended up finding uh, one of Bobby's favorite guys, Raven. You know, these were all the WCW guys here. Uh, these this line of figures. So I ended up getting a Raven, and I ended up getting a Scott Steiner. Um, so I thought that was a very cool deal. Um, not bad. Three of those guys for five dollars. And that Andre, I ended up getting him for 20 and this guy is like on eBay for 100 150 all day long. Uh, so it was very cool to, to get this guy. The LJNs are just skyrocketed so much. Like, if you were to get one on card, you're talking about that's $250. And it could be like an SD Jones, someone who had no big... Uh, phenomenon behind them, you know, not like a Hulk Hogan or Ultimate Warrior. Um, you know, he was just a mid Carter, and it would, it would still be two hundred fifty bucks. And they actually gave him two figures, uh, so you still have to find two of them to complete the collection. But then I ran across a big boy. Uh, I mean, this guy is cool. As soon as I see him. Uh, I was like, I, I have to have him, you know. Um, I find myself, it's kind of weird. Like, as a kid, you're you're playing with the like the little GI Joes, you know, because the, the, they just fit in your hand. Um, but as a, an adult, I would rather have some that I can display and see from afar. So having those big giant guys where I can just stick them on a shelf and be so dramatic where he pops out you know that's um that's awesome to me and right around there i ended up finding the big version of the hulk hogan uh, so uh as i said i was always a hulk hogan kid growing up you know uh, he's never been this ripped um uh, so i mean <laughs> i don't know why they have him i mean that's like an eight pack all day long um but uh <laughs> Kind of crazy, but uh, I had to pick him up. And he was like the best deal that day because, uh, you know, his sticker price is 23 bucks, But the, the lady that was running the, the, the stand for that one was uh, buy one, same value, uh, get one free. So, uh, you know, growing up, I, I wish I would have grabbed him. I have him over there. But it's a big uh, Ninja Turtle. It's a big Raphael. Um and like I said, the bigger the better. They display a lot easier. Um, I can put them on a higher shelf so the dogs can't get to them. Because, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> when I first had my first collection, and I had a lot, and I kept them all in the package. But every now and then, like one of the kids, like uh, my oldest boy, Jordan, he got to him the first time. I had him. I never displayed him. I always had him in a closet. Well, he found the closet one evening. And, like, opened up so many before I found out what he was doing. Oh, my God, that pissed me off. And then uh, Zach, my middle child, didn't really care about wrestling, uh, which is funny, too, because he actually tried to become a wrestler. Um, and I think I told the story about that. He uh, went to training, uh, but he always suffered from headaches as a young kid. Uh, and... 
God knows, as a wrestler, when you first start out, you're trying to learn how to fall backwards and protect your neck and protect your head. Um, and uh, he couldn't get that down. Uh, so, you know, one good pop on that head, uh, and you'll have the worst freaking headache you, you, you would ever have, you know. Um, but I got to give him credit. He actually tried out for it. And uh, he used to come to the, you know, all my boys came to me, uh, came with me to the shows. Uh, and I, I talk about how it's so funny because, like, Jordan came uh, with me until he discovered girls. And then Zach did the same thing. And so, so when Jordan uh, stopped coming, Zach was at the age to come with me. And then when Zach found girls, so he stopped coming. And then Dylan uh, was right there. And he, you know, he carried it on for a while, too. Uh, kind of like how Bobby's boys are, are coming to the wrestling shows. And, um, you know, unless he's selling stuff, you don't see your oldest boy with you. Uh, you know, it's mainly uh, Kale with you. Um, well, so, Landon's uh, big thing is he's usually coming from something. No, I mean, that could be too. Well, I mean, all three of your boys are so busy, so it's kind of crazy with that. Um, so back in the day, growing up, I was always a Star Wars kid. G.I. Joe's or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and wrestling. Those were the four things I ever cared about. Never cared about superheroes. Never cared about Transformers. Um, and, and a lot of people did. Those just wasn't my thing. So I also <laughs> picked up this guy. Uh, and I have a bunch of these, uh, you know, very tall uh, Star Wars guys. But this one is the first one that, you know, kind of has a, a different feel. He's all like, all his, all the, like the plastic in the movie is all rubber. Where normally you find these tall guys, it's just plastic, just hard plastic. But this is, is kind of cool because he's just like all rubbery. Um, first time I've ever seen that. So had to pick him up because, uh, uh, of course, I'm still a Star Wars kid. Um but, yeah, so got those all this weekend at the fairgrounds. Um, fairgrounds is awesome to go to at the, on the flea markets. Uh, if you guys ever go there or any of the fans ever go there, you'll see my sister there. You can stop by, say hi to her. Uh, she uh, draws. Um, uh, caricatures. Uh, caricatures, yeah. She also does animals, and that's where she gets a lot of her uh, – uh, customers, you know, people drawing their animal or if their dog passed on, you can bring her a picture, no joke, and she'll draw exactly how that dog looked. Um, and so she got all the artistry skills uh, where, uh, you know, I went into wrestling and then uh, um, I don't know what skills my brother got. Uh, <laughs> unless you're talking about partying and, and, and skipping school to hang out with people, you know, he got those goals. He did eventually change, and now I'm very proud of him because uh, he, uh, he's he been with uh, Maxim Security Prison out in Kansas for the longest time where he actually has a collection of guns. And I tell you, growing up with this kid, I would have never thought anyone would uh, give him a gun to hold. Uh, and, <laughs> and now it's his responsibility to carry one just in case an inmate gets out of, uh, out of line or, or whatever. So it's kind of night and day, so I got to be proud of him. But, uh, yeah, that was my weekend. You know, I mean, it, was a, it was a great weekend. Did a lot of stuff on Saturday. Not a lot of stuff on Sunday, so it was kind of perfect. <laughs> One busy day and then another day to just kind of relax a little bit, you know. Um, but we need that because SICW, man, we're on the road for the rest of this year. You know, we're pretty much booked every weekend in October. Uh, we got quite a few dates. I think it's three weekends in November. Um, you know, we got that Mac show that uh, happens during the week. Uh, so we got that one coming up in October. Um, all the way up until uh, December. In December, we take our yearly break. And uh, we don't do anything for the month of December. So that's kind of nice. Got to give that body uh, time to relax and uh, rejuvenate itself. Uh, so, but that's all I got for you. So, uh, you know, uh, just want to tell everyone, uh, please push, uh, keep helping us push this, uh, cause, um, we like to do this. Um, 
and I think we're still on a, like a viewer, like limited viewer. Uh, I don't know what you say that limited views for people. Uh, I don't think the algorithm has uh, helped us out still. Uh, you know, I keep forcing it on Facebook and, you know, breaking it down uh, and throwing some clips on uh, um, TikTok and stuff like that. But it doesn't seem like we were getting the airplay that we had in the, in the past. So anyone out there, if you can help us out, you know, if you like this uh, episode or any of the old episodes, you know, please share those um, and help us get the name out, you know, a little further, um, get a little bit more views, you know. Uh, I didn't, uh, I normally look before we start this to see what we are in our subscriptions. Uh, so I did not look. Did anyone look at that today? I did not, and my computer died. Nice. Well, I can tell you that we're not at 500 because that would ring us a bell. So if you guys can uh, like these videos, share the content, subscribe, uh, help us get to the 500 uh, subscriber mark, that would be great. Um, 407. Huh? 407. 407. So we're only 93 away, guys. <laughs> we're only 93,000 like away. <laughs> so if you like the content just please help us uh and get the word out i know i personally talked to uh some people uh last week on the sicw show uh because when it's premieres and it's live and we're able to contact uh, talk to the people that are watching you know um, i was able to tell them i said if you like this uh and this ep and that episode was talking about uh, billy getting his haircut and they mm -hmm. show clips of it and like, if you want more information about this match and how Billy feels about this match uh, and the history of Billy McNeil, come watch our show. And uh, I got a few people to come on and uh, and watch it. And they actually got back to me and told me that I was awesome. That uh, uh, you know, Billy is one that really never you never see Billy give interviews. Um, and it was nice to get his history. Um, and I talked to Billy after our show aired, and uh, he said he loved being on this, uh, and it might open him up to, you know, come on future visits, or even open him up to come and spread to other platforms. So, um, uh, you know, we're helping uh, the wrestlers for SICW get out there, and that's a big point of this. And uh, our bigger point is we want to get out there. Uh, so anything you guys can do and help us out is much appreciated. Um, like I said, uh, catch the Vince McMahon show. If you're watching this on Thursday, it just uh, premiered that Wednesday before. So, um, you know, give us some feedback uh, on the show. If you liked it, what you thought of it, uh, if you thought that they did a good job or they just tiptoed around the, the firing of Vince McMahon, let us know, you know, um, uh, that way we can talk about it next week. Uh, but until then, from everyone at the Square Green Podcast, Bobby D, Nasty Nate, and Big Texan, I would like to say thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. You guys have a good night. Thanks, Saturday. Yeah. See ya.